What is it uh, that's so hard about closing a border? It seems to me quite extraordinary that it's so poor. So you get two and a half million people crossing this border in Mexico in a single year. I know it's long and I, I know you'd have to deploy a lot of people and build more fences, but seriously, how can it be that porous? Because we have strained resources, we let people know that if they get in, that they can stay. The thing that I find fascinating about this is that we have ports of entry, right? Uh, border crossings that are staffed and manned by U.S. personnel. Uh, and yet we see these people who are claiming asylum not go you know, through those ports of entry. They're climbing over fences. They're going through rivers and such. And my point is, is that they were really trying to follow the process. We have a process and ports of entry that you go through. They're clearly not doing this for a reason, because they know that this administration will let them stay. Uh, we're having stories of people uh, staying in hotels in New York, you know, to the tune of uh, really nice hotels. We're talking about handing out gift cards to them and phones. And, and I mean, it, we might as well have a, a big blinking sign that says, come on in, here's what you get for arriving. Um, at the same time, we're not treating our own citizens, our veterans in a way that's acceptable. Uh, but I mean, the answer is, I think when the word gets out that you're welcome to come in and that it'll take you potentially up to you know nine, 10 years before your case ever gets heard, if you choose to show up, why would you you know, go through go through any other means to do this. But I, like I said, I mean, the fentanyl crisis alone should be one thing. The number of people who are entering who've been on our terrorist watch list should be another. These reports of Chinese men of military age should be another thing. But yet, w that doesn't seem to concern the folks on the left who believe that this is something that we have to trade for or negotiate over. And that, that to me, is something that I never thought I'd see in my lifetime. I guess it coincides with this idea that uh, to be nationalistic is racist and Trumpian and all that kind of stuff. Um, but, but Andrew, that's the left. Seems th th there's yeah, there, there's folks on the left that believe that. But I, I am come to believe that this administration recognizes that it, it's more than a philosophical thing. They, they truly do look at this as potential future voters. This and 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 there's you know when you walk through the process. They want them to come in. They will give them legal status. They give them temporary work right away um, ability. And, and yes, then they start talking about a path to citizenship. It, it is laughable to think that that's not the plan. And I find it, for those folks uh, in, in America who don't see what's going on, I feel like I, I don't know what else you could do to show them it, because it's not philosophical about, you know, there is a subset of folks that believe that. But the vast majority of these folks do it for purely political reasons. Well, millions of uh, votes are quite handy uh, if the Democrats can count on them. So maybe you're correct. But Sean Spicer, there, uh, speaking of Trump, there are now um, sniping articles asking where his wife is, Melania. Why ha why isn't she by his side campaigning, family rift, all that kind of stuff? Is a daughter of Ivanka too? Um, what can you tell us about all this? Well, look, I, I think if you go back to 16 and 20, she picks her moments. She goes out there. She's obviously very supportive of him, number one. Number two, uh, she has a, a son that's still in school, <laughs> Baron, and I think she has always prioritized being a mother to him. If, if you're going to have a dad that's out on the campaign trail, it's nice to have another parent that's there, and that's the, the role that she's always cherished and made it very clear that that's her first priority. So I, I think we will see more of her. Uh, like she did, uh, she picks her moments. She'll come out on the trail. Uh, the president addressed this a little while ago, saying that, you know, after a lot of the abuse that his kids had to take, um, that he he wanted them to maybe dial it back a little and pick their moments. But you see Don Jr. out there very forcefully uh, on a regular basis. Eric Trump has been out there as well. So it's, you know, I I, I think that the media is always looking to find something. Yeah, I guess so. And the, some of the abuse of uh, Barron, his youngest son, I thought was just absolutely outrageous, including from a couple of Democrat politicians, I think, who had to uh, had to apologise for it. But it's so brutal. I don't think a lot of people realise how brutal it can be. And there are humans at the end of it. Sean Spicer, always great to talk to you. Look forward to catching up with you next week. Thanks for your time. Thanks, Andrew. Well, that didn't take long. Jenny Leong, the uh, Greens...
MP who uh, said the Jews are everywhere, they're tentacles. When they rock up to meetings, has now apologised. She didn't know octopus was a uh, was an anti-Semitic uh, trope, and she didn't quite. Well, I don't know. Maybe she didn't know that, but I tell you what, the Jews are everywhere is poison enough.